do we need a new tool? We do not have, because so far, the, the, the difference between the number of patients, number of bed, is something totally new for us. Mm -hmm. Okay? And not only for us, all the country will have to, to deal with this. But it's difficult to tell people that if you are 80, you will never have the ICU bed. Of course. But so far, if you have not the opportunity to build a new hospital with 1,000 bed, such as in China, we need this terrible tool because this is a tool of selection. Right, of who lives and who dies. Yeah. This is the critical situation in Italy. The country our vice president and Dr. Fauci said that we are now most comparable to. Italy, where more than 13,000 people have already died. Italy, where 20% of the country's healthcare professionals have already been infected with COVID. Italy, where scenes of people getting taken to hospitals are described like this. On a Saturday, a Red Cross volunteer found herself in the bedroom of a 90-year-old man. She asked his two granddaughters if he had any contact with anyone who had the coronavirus. Yes, they said. The man's son, their father, who had died on Wednesday. Their grandmother, they told her, had been taken away on Friday and was in critical condition. They weren't crying, she said, because they didn't have any tears left. Italy, which has been on a nationwide lockdown since March 10th and just extended it to April 13th. Italy, where the curve may now finally be flattening. Numbers coming in this week suggest the pace of new cases is slowing. But lastly, Italy, where the country's death rate may actually be much higher because deaths outside of hospitals are not being reported. Is this what we are in for. Joining our conversation, Rome Bureau Chief for the New York Times, Jason Horowitz, Ron Klain and Dr. Wen are both back. Um, Jason, I read your stories um, usually in tears, but did it strike you um, as it struck me as remarkable to hear the vice president of the United States say that we are at this point most like Italy? Well, in a certain sense, it's not surprising because Italy is uh, the the Western democracy that's sort of been at the vanguard of this. And uh, you know, so really the, it broke out in uh, the end of February, February 23rd is when they started closing towns. And, um, you know, I think it was the sort of thing that Italy was also sort of guilty of this. It looked to China and thought that isn't us, that's not going to happen to us. And I think in a similar way, the rest of Europe and the United States looked at Italy and thought that's not going to happen to us either. And it's happening everywhere because this virus sort of doesn't care what nationality you are. Let me read some more of your reporting, which has been remarkable. Um, you wrote this. So many people are dying so quickly. The hospital mortuaries and funeral workers cannot keep up. We take the dead from the morning till night, one after the other, constantly, uh, said Von, Vonda Uh, I'm going to botch the name, Piccioli, who runs one of the last funeral homes to remain open. Others have closed as a result of sick funeral directors, some in intensive care. Usually we honor the dead. Now it's like a war and we collect the victims. What is reporting this story like, Jason? Uh, it's sad. It's a sad story. It's about uh, people losing their grandparents, basically the entire And not the entire north, but a good section of the north of Italy is uh, walloped with this. And um, that means that, and since this virus hits elderly people very hard, and Italy is the second uh, oldest country in the world on average after Japan. So you're having a lot of people die. And, um, and Italians are people who feel very connected to their uh, older generations. They really care about their grandparents and they often live with them uh, or grew up with them. And so you're just talking to people who are losing the people closest to them um, and um, and they can't do anything about it. So it's it's a sad story, you know, obviously. It's a very sad story. Um, Ron Klain, it jumped out at me to hear Vice President Pence let it slip out that based on the spread and based on the models, we here look most like Italy, because if you take Donald Trump's public utterances, and I don't know what's in his head or in his heart, he wasn't talking like that's where he saw the country he leads heading as recently as a week ago. Yeah, and Nicole, of course, it would be a even more catastrophic failure if our number of fatalities on a per capita basis matched Italy, because as Jason alluded to, to be more specific about it, 
the median age in Italy is 10 years older than in the United States. So we would expect the death rate in Italy to be significantly higher than it is in the United States. And if we're on a path to match Italy's death rate, that's an even more catastrophic failure here than it was in Italy. And so uh, I don't think it's a good model for us. It's, it's not where we should be. Uh, we also had more warning than Italy had. We have the example of Italy. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's really even, there's no excuse for the way it got in Italy. There's even less excuse for what's happened here with that kind of heads up, that kinds of warning that we should have been taking the bold actions on testing, on producing gear and equipment, on isolating people uh, long before we did. And we're uh, now on a very bad track because we didn't. You know, Dr. Wen, something um, that Jason just said is that one of the um, failures in Italy was that they were slow to lock the country down. Um, we still don't have a uniform nationwide uh, quarantine. And I think one uh, governor said today, oh, I didn't even know that coronavirus could um, spread from asymptomatic people. Is it our response, our slow response and our lack of testing that makes us like Italy? Or is it something about the, the age and the um, pre-existing conditions of our population? What makes Vice President Pence and Anthony Fauci say that we are Italy? I think what makes them say that we're like Italy is the trajectory of where we're going, which is sobering. I mean, even in the best case estimates, we're talking about 100,000 to 200,000 people dead in the U.S. in the coming months from COVID-19, which is in the best case scenario if we do things exactly right, which we're not. I mean, you're right, Nicole, we, we are not. We don't have a national coordinated strategy. We talked earlier about the problems with our healthcare systems and the lack of testing. But we also have a huge issue that we as a country are not uniform with asking people to do the one thing, the one thing that will reduce the rate of transmission, which is to stay at home. I mean, it's unbelievable to me that there is still that governor who is saying he didn't know about asymptomatic transmission. It's unbelievable that there are still governors who are looking at what's happening in New York, what's happening, what's going to be happening in Florida, Louisiana, and Michigan, and everywhere, and not thinking that's going to happen to me too. I mean, what are we waiting for? Are we waiting for numbers to go up also in every state? Because by that point, it's going to be too late. It will be inevitable then, but it's not inevitable now. And I hope that that's the takeaway from it all, that there is something that we can do right now to flatten that curve. We still have an opportunity to not make us on the trajectory of Italy, but that takes coordinated action by the federal government right now. Jason, I want to give you the last word. And because Italy, if that's where we he we're heading, um, is a few weeks ahead of us, tell me what's happening now. And for the people that look to the future, how do they see the next few weeks playing out for that country? Well, I just think one thing that's really important to, to point out is that America is like Italy also in that it's a democracy. And there's this really, it's not like China. You just can't close everything down. So you have to sort of get buy-in yeah. from the country to do that. And that's one of the things that... Um, that Italy has shown is not easy, right? And it's sort of been an incremental close down. And, and, in, a, and in a way, it, it would have been better if they closed it down earlier. And there's these fights between the central government and the governors here, too. Um, but I think the most important thing here that everyone sort of gets now is that you have to stay home. And that um, if you don't stay mm -hmm. home, uh, you are endangering maybe not yourself. Maybe you're healthy. Maybe you're in your 30s. But you could be a carrier, and you know we still don't know um, exactly the, the contagion rate of people without symptoms. Uh, we still don't know what the immunity levels of people who have survived this are, right? So, so th mm -hmm. there's so many sort of questions about um, about the danger that people pose to their fellow citizens. That really the safest thing is just to stay home, and you know they'll balance the leaders will balance the questions of economy and um, individual rights. But really, uh, it seems like what people here understand now, and I think in the United States, they'll, they'll eventually understand that as we get closer to, as, as things go on, is that staying home is really the thing that you can do. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.